Wallabies up against England, folks. Game number two. Remember, game number one was a pretty close one, 30 points to 28, but remembering England ran in a couple of late tries to make the scoreboard look a little bit healthier. We're going to go through some uh, lineups, some stats, some predictions, and you guys can let me know your thoughts on how game two is going to go. Remembering, if you guys are in the States, want to watch last week's games or this week's games, Flow Rugby is the place to be, including your uh, Chile against uh, USA Rugby World Cup qualifying game, which could be a pretty interesting one this weekend and next weekend. But um, yeah, like I said, it was a pretty close one last week on paper, but the Aussies kind of broke that drought against England because they had been on a massive losing run. We look at the last five results, we've at least got Aussie on the board now. It was five zip. And um, yeah, it was one done with a, a man down for much of the game with Darcy Swain getting a red card he has been banned for a couple of weeks so he will not play england again on this tour um the guy he was uh banned for headbutt and johnny hill managed to escape any kind of punishment so well he got the yellow card but that was it so um yeah i know that's much to the annoyance of some of the wallabies fans but anyway that'll give them a reason to be fired up against england this weekend uh the wallabies are bolstered by the return of big taniela tupo at tight head that's absolutely phenomenal that he's back obviously Ala Alatoa uh, is absent remember he went off pretty early last week in the game so James Slipper had to play much of the game at tight head uh, if they hadn't had Tupo back they may have been in a bit of strife but Tupo is their front line tight head prop he's an absolute unit ball in hand he does things that other props just can't do so that's a bit of great news for them. He's alongside Pareki and Bell, so otherwise the front row is unchanged. Uh, Phillip steps up into the uh, the second row in the absence of Darcy Swain. As I said, he's suspended. Then Caden Neville's still there as well. And then Leota, Hooper, and Valtini is the same back row as last week. And I thought they did pretty well. And then Samu added a bit of um, a bit of energy when he came on too. Uh, Nick White and Lolasio is the same 19. Remember, Quade Cooper is out for the series with that calf injury. So Lolasio, under maybe no pressure, having to step in last minute, maybe a world of pressure. I'm not sure how he kind of you know reacted. He didn't have time to dwell on the fact that he'd been picked for any length of time because as far as he was concerned, he was starting on the bench, but he stepped up really well. Kicked all his goals, passed confidently, so he's still there at 10. We look for another big performance from him. And then Karevi and Paisami uh, in the midfield. Remember, Paisami's come in for Ikitao this week. Um, Ikitao maybe didn't have the same impact. I haven't seen if he's injured, but uh, Karevi, interestingly, kicked about four times. He's got a pretty big boot on him. That's kind of a bit unexpected. When you think Karevi, you think ball carries offloads. You don't necessarily think a kicking game, so... Interesting that he's added that string to his bow. Uh, Corabetti's there on the left wing. He was really busy. And then Tom Wright comes in on the right wing. And uh, Jordi Pattaya isn't there at 15 because um, Callaway's had to withdraw with a hamstring injury. And then Tom Banks obviously uh, hurt his arm pretty badly. He's got long term. So uh, Jordi Pattaya is going to have a wee bit of pressure on him at fullback. Uh, his kicking game will certainly be tested. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how they manage that anyway. The bench find Garcia and Slipper. Same props. Frost comes into the 23 as a replacement lock. Samu, like I mentioned, still there. Gordon O'Connor. And then Izzy Parise is into the 23. So uh, if you haven't seen him play, he's another guy who can carry the ball pretty well. So having Paisami, Karevi, and Parise is about an aggressive as a Wallabies midfield as you are like to see any time. Uh, for England, they have also had to make a few changes. Remember, Tom Curry uh, has been sent home with concussion, so we're not going to see him for the rest of this tour. He is alongside Billy V and Courtney Laws in the back row, so that's the same as last week. And I, I don't mind like swapping Curry for Underhill, man. They're both tackling machines. They both love dominant tackles, so it's great when they play together because they just absolutely tackle the house down. But, I mean, Sam Underhill is a pretty good replacement to have. Hill and Atoje, same second row. Stewart, George, and Genj, the same uh, front row as well. They did get a bit of joy at mall time with Genji's try last week. They'll be looking to maybe turn the screws a wee bit more. But, um, yeah, they weren't really able to kind of dominate like we thought maybe was going to happen last week, especially when Slipper came on. Uh, Van Portfleet gets his first start in England. Just remember, he made his debut last week. Uh, got a, not sneaky, sweet try uh, from the bench when he came on. Uh, he's alongside Marcus Smith. So that kind of Danny Kerr and Marcus Smith telepathic relationship maybe didn't kind of uh, have the desired effect last week. So Van Portfleet gets his crack. And then uh, Farrell and Porter are the midfield. So Guy Porter was on the bench last week, didn't come on, but he gets a start this week. So it's his 
uh, debut for England. Interesting with his Aussie connections. And then Tommy Freeman is in for his debut on the left wing uh, ahead of Thokana Singer. So, yeah, it's um, a wee bit of pressure. Van Port Fleet first cap, Freeman, sorry, Van Port Fleet second cap, Freeman first, Porter first. Um, yeah, man, faith being shown in some guys who, to be fair, in the Premiership have been doing really well this season. But uh, test level is always another de another another deal, another another level. Uh, Jack Knowles in the right wing and Freddie Stewart is at fullback. I mean, if I was Eddie, I'd be throwing Freddie Stewart at Pattaya aerially all day long. But um, yeah, we'll kind of have to see if he decides to uh, use the the aerial weapon, which is Freddie Stewart's Freddie Stewart's Freddie Stewart's ability to catch balls in there. I don't know what's wrong with my mouth today. It's not keeping up with what my brain is thinking. Replacements: Cowan Dickey, Vinnie Polo, and Hayes. Same front row replacements: Chisholm and Ludlam. Same other forward replacements. Then Jack Willis comes in. So it's just the two backs on the bench with Danny Kerr and Henry Arundel, who came on pretty well last week. He had a couple of carries and a bunch of run meters. Scored a try, so he looked really dangerous, but not enough to get a start. Remember, there's no March and no Thock and a singer, and Curry was sent home. So with injury obviously but um yeah stats wise like i mentioned lolos here kicked his goals passed confidently he had three offloads which was a fair chunk of what the entire team had credit to their team's defense as well they made 145 tackles they tackled at 87 percent it was just maybe a little bit weak at the end of the game but um you got to give credit to the way the english attacked at the end england we didn't really get to see that much of smith's running game we've seen him do it for quinn's and for england but not quite uh, in last week's game. Stewart, obviously, in the air is good. I've put a question mark. Will we see more of that? Um, we did see what they were capable of at the end. Like I mentioned, Arundel had 54 meters, which was the most of any England player, which is a little bit concerning because he only came on for a couple of runs at the end. He came on like 74th minute and had more carrot, more run meters than anybody else. So, yeah, England had four clean, clean breaks and Arundel had two of them. As I said, came on in the 74th minute. So... Yeah, uh, the average score across the last five games now is still England pretty dominant, 33-17, but for what that's worth, remember the uh, most recent game is the one that counts, 30 points to 28. We are at Suncorp, which traditionally is a bit of a fortress for the Wallabies boys. It's an 8 o'clock local kickoff, so it's a kind of late morning kickoff for you guys in the UK. Andrew Brace is the ref. Predictions-wise, the bookies say Aussie by 2, and the rugby forecast algorithm says Aussie by Five. You guys let me know your thoughts. Can you see uh, the English bouncing back? If you think so, get yourself some England Rugby gear from England Rugby Store, Summer Sale. Uh, link down in the description for them. They're an affiliate of the channel. Otherwise, happy days. You guys let me know your thoughts on this game. And uh, yes, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.